Hey, yo, what's up, boy? Hey, nothing, brother. Just uh, what's up with the... hey, tell us about the game today, man. Big win, bro. We climbing the um, we climbing the standards right now, so. You know, I always feel like any team I played on, we always got a chance. So it's just kind of cool to see these guys buy in. And you can see the, like, the belief building in the group. Good vibes right now. Big win. I have two guys that, you know, the G League is kind of crazy uh, with all the moving parts. But they hadn't been playing much. They started getting a little bit of run over the last couple games, and they came up big for us tonight. So that's what's like – that's what makes the season so cool. Like little stories like that. You know, yeah. you just keep building. Hey, um, you got your first start today, man. How did that feel? I mean, look at your journey. Like, how was that today? Getting your first start. First start. It's been wild. November 20, 2022. It, you never, you never get tired of hearing your name. Like, it's never, it never gets old, I man. Like, I had butterflies the whole nine. Like, like, feel like, you know, when, you, when you've had, had the, the journey I've had, like, you just learn to appreciate, like, every little thing. So, it was just nice getting to come out. My brother was there, my niece, uh, my sister-in-law. So, it was a nice little, you know, they got to see it. My niece got to see it. So, she actually sent a video to my, to my mom. She's seven years old, hooping. So, she, she's, she's soaking it up. It was nice. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what you been uh, how uh, how lifetime Folsom? The lifetime be you going first? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> KP scared. Okay, so I leave to the Philippines. I'm about to leave, oh, but I want to play before I go. And then KP said, since Doc can't play, that he don't want to play us. He want to play us the next week. That's when you get. But now nah, you gone for a minute though. I know, but I want to beat him before I leave. Uh, oh, you know. I'm saying so we, got, we got to get like the the the, the all time records against against one another at lifetime. Well, right, right now I'm three and zero against KP for show. I think I'm really two and zero against you. You just your, your score was ahead of mine, but really I won that game. You just you you won by points, but I won the game. Really, it don't make no sense. What do you but mean? It sounded good. <laughs> yeah, it don't make no sense. What are you talking about? I ain't got many L's in, 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 in Folsom hey, yet. Babe, I'm going to add my boy on here. Yep. He been, he been wanting to be on your damn. He want he, he wanted you to be on his podcast so long. As, let's get him on here. Hopefully he accepts. But anyway, um, uh-oh, here we go. Look at the light skin. Yeah, good, bro. Yeah, good. Hey, what's up to him, man? He's right here. Stop. All right, here we go. Don't start. Ken, Ken, I just wanted to say what's up to you. Mark has oh, been that's... hating um, you getting on my podcast because he wants to be a hater. Crazy. So I just wanted to let you know that personally. Right on. I don't know why he, why he hating on it, man. man. So hey, good. If you, uh, if you don't know Chris Bates, he, he coaches. And um, first of all, 0-2 against us. Sam, you don't want them problems, okay, Sam? Sam talking reckless. Um, anyway, he coaches AAU. He charges a lot of money for AAU. We ain't going to throw those numbers out. But 2500 Don't I, even I start with the money time. shit. Don't I start with the money. Talk about that. Bro, have you seen? See him talk about bro, the money stuff. Marcus, he always claims all that in, money bro. shit. Hey, listen, you gotta have fun some time, people. But real quick, um, babe, so you doing your thing. Um, what's what's the what's what's the next step? Obviously, you want to win the championship, right? Oh, no question. I mean, that's why you, that's why you play, you know, and I feel like so much has gotten between that that goal and like, you know, the self, like so many other obstacles and distractions within the game of basketball. Like, you know, being a Pierce, I grew up playing on a three-quarter slab of cement on like nine and a half foot goals, you know, like just the bare, the bare bones of the game. But now, you know, it's so much in between that, that, that groundedness and, you know, the reason why you truly play and that's the win. Like I, I haven't won. I think last time I won was a CAA championship 2011. First time I have I've had like a championship, so that's that's over a decade ago. So it's time, you know. For, I've had for opportunities girls. in the league where I've been on teams. I lead, they win. You know, I had to sit through all that. So like, 
you know, now is the time. So that's 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 the motivation. Like, you know, at this time of the year, I've been trying to tell my guys, like, you know, your body's going to feel how it feels. You just got to understand that you're going to give the best. You're going to give all you can in the moment. Yeah. You know, you can't really worry about how you feel. Just go through your preparation and show up. Just keep showing up. And it's gonna work out. You're gonna you're gonna play with what you got, and that's always gonna be enough. Man, I don't know if y'all watched the games today, man. I, I mean, uh, kind of piggyback, but uh, college the women's college basketball is entertaining, man. I was watching uh, USC. Right. You uh, saw the LSU. Was watching, uh, LSU. Yeah. Hey, it was hey, man. Women's uh, college hoops. I don't know why. <laughs> no disrespect, but it's more entertaining than the WNBA. I don't know why. I just. Oh, it is. You know what I'm saying? It, it, well, don't get it wrong. The WNBA, when it gets on in the playoffs, we are tuned in. But I'm just yep. saying, right uh, now, yeah. like, I'm watching games. I'm knowing who people are. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of entertained with the, the girls' side of it right now. Bro, uh, bro, women. did you see? Did Sorry, you see women. Lance? Did you see Lance's video on it? He yeah. came out that video quick, bro. I was quick. like, what? Quick. Nah, and bro. then, did you see? Hope, did you see little buddy jump out on the court, I whoever that was? I think that was his her sister, her, her brother. Bro. I think. Bro. Hey, when he when he saw a girl was six seven, he looked up, you saw, he was like, Oh, I'm, I don't want these problems. He rethought his whole life, bro. So but real quick, it? both of you guys, y'all both know the game. So Juju is a great player. But today, um, the girl on Stanford played, I think, great defense, forcing her left, and then every time she were to drive that help would come. But Juju, Juju did a great job making a pass to make a pass for an easy layup. So do you think from a coaching perspective, sometimes you got to let that player kind of go off and just control everybody else? Because, I mean, USC was getting layups. And uh, a old girl from uh, Folsom was killing. Don't get it wrong. But they got a few layups where I was like, if they would have just played Juju straight up, well, maybe that layup would never happen. But you, you got to understand that's the gravity that some of these – like that's that's how, how that's the kind of talent we're producing within the game. I mean, but to go back to the LSU and the South Carolina like, like scrap scrap, I think it's like stuff outside of the game that's like causing that kind of friction. Because mm. I feel like at the end of the day, they all respect each other. Like, you know, I just feel like it's like the outside noise that 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 really makes them take it to like a level that I mean, it shouldn't even really be on the court. Like, it shouldn't get to where you know the benches are clean. There should be, you know, with the respect do, in the game. Do you, you know, think the game you think so? You think social media is a big influencer on 100%, that? Hundred percent. I mean, that's that's kind of why. Yeah. I like, that's kind of what my relationship with social media. Like, I mean, I'll just go cold turkey, and I'll come back on. Like, you got to really create a balance because it's like it's so much distraction keeps coming up. All these external forces, like, you know, different ways of thinking There's so many voices out there now right like i mean in order to, be, to become the best you know version of yourself it's, it's about being grounded you know staying true to you but you know if you got you know and it's and it's hard for these kids because it's like you know caitlin clark's probably what 21 years old 20 21 years old having yeah the time of her life but you know it i feel like it, it should be for her like her family but it's like so national now you know what i mean like those those are the stories that, like, I mean, I really hope she's just, like, embracing, you know, where she is. That's what I always try to get these younger younger people to do. Like, be young. Be a kid. Be 16 years old. Like, you don't have no bills. You don't have no responsibilities. It's, like, school and hoops. You know, student athlete. I, I mean, student athlete comes first. Student first. Like, stay there because once you start piling on all this responsibility and all this expectation, it gets real. It gets super real. Like you gotta really know who you are first. So like that's I mean that's a whole another. That's well, a whole like, another well, I can't. Um, and you know, uh, just just because I don't know. How old are you? I'll be thirty five this year. Okay, so you're. I'm forty, so we're around the same age. We remember what life was like before social media, before you know cell phones, yeah. right? And you think about it. We're the last generation that's gonna remember. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're the last when we when we, you know, pass away due to old age, right. right? Like I'm hoping every brother does. We will literally be the last generation that remembers what life was like before phones, before social media and things like that. So I just know it's it's it is hard and trying to find that balance, like you said, between managing uh that marketing side of it 
right? Yeah. And still trying to like be a good person, have good values. But that's what I'm saying. Due to the fact that you remember what life was like before that, you you can you can you know, plug yourself. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. I feel like I feel like I, I don't see it, it's not necess- it, it only becomes an issue when it's like when you when you consume too much of it like i feel yeah. like it's good that you know because it's providing an opportunity for a lot of kids in the small towns i grew up in a town of 300 people you know oh, if yeah. i had ballers like, like back then i would have i mean i would have been on the tape a long time ago catching the body right. but you know I, right. I do i do appreciate that side of i just think there's like you know a balance with everything and i feel yeah. like we put too much weight on 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 that side of things now like i mean even just being at like Curry Camp, you see these kids, they like, you see them on social media and then you see them in person, you just realize like, this this is a 15 year old kid. Like, That's right. <laughs> the child, you know what I mean? They, they aren't this, they aren't this like uh, mystical being, you know, they're just a 15, 16 year old kid that's just like traveling the world, you know, doing something that they love. You know, I just think, you know, if the emphasis is like, you know, we really just focus on, you know, what's important because as I'm learning basketball, it's just a small, it's a small, it's literally a small, small blip of your life. Like, right. I left home 17 years ago, but I feel like, you know, to, to play the game, I graduated high school 17 years ago. I've been playing ball ever since five years of college, 12 years pro. So like, I love the game, but I mean, I feel like this is just the beginning of, you know, really what's to come. Like the game is, is, is a teacher. It's going to show you things. You're going to learn about yourself, especially if you stay the course. Like, I mean, I go to another conversation about all this transferring and shit like that. I, I just don't understand it. Like, stay the course. You know, I said in my post, it's amazing what it'll do for your growth. But I just think we it, we can we can we can still have social media and still but still preach like, you know, the, the foundations of building like better people versus, yeah. you know, an athlete that has like a five year window and then disappears off the face of the earth. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, so Chris, you had games today? Yeah. Yeah. So I was at the uh and I mean Ken, I don't, you know, you can always feel free to jump in on this side of it, but I was I'm in LA right now. I did the junior three S B event. It's in a you know, the Adidas uh junior yeah. circuit, right? Yeah. And so, you know, it was a lot of good, good competition. A lot I don't know if you saw that video of that big sixth grader we played against. Yeah. It was like six five, five, six, six. Real talk. He talked with me. He was sixth grade, <laughs> six five. Now, now again, he looked, I don't he know if he's look, actually twelve, but how did he I'm run? Just, he he I didn't see that like, birth certificate, bro. He, he did. Look yeah, like yeah, bro. Back, I, in my, back in our day, you check that birth certificate. Look, and to be fair, no, no, he. I I personally think he was thirteen. That's just my opinion, because <laughs> he didn't he didn't have the skill set yet of like an eighth grade or eighth grade movement. Right. But he was a little better than like a sixth grade normal big. You know what right. I'm saying? So I personally think he was 13. But even still, I was like, bro, this kid is 6'5". Like, that's ridiculous. That. You can't do nothing with that. <laughs> then, the bro, and and we would have won the game if my uh, guards would have been knocking down threes. Like, we kept running pick and roll, and they kept putting them under the screen, and he just kept missing. And uh, my guards kept missing and missing and missing. Because that it was like seven minutes – Left in the first half, half, the score was 12 to 7. 12 to 7. Oh, wow. Like, that's how low yeah. it was. You know what I mean? But in this AU stuff, especially Adidas stuff and the shoe circuit stuff, you see such wild stuff, man. The, 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 this reclassing and stuff yeah, is but, unreal, man. Bro, I'm just telling you, it's unreal. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't the have thing about it. The thing about the reclassing thing, and I'm, we're starting to see, and I think, Chris, you've been, you'd be at the games, but. You're starting to see yeah. kids that were so good, so young, and they get to high school and they don't even pan out. And then parents have a tough time. And I think we talk about mental health. We talk about this all the time. But mental health is going to play a factor. When a kid yeah. think he's going to the NBA but didn't make the varsity team at his high school, it's going to be a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah. like, or you're just not that player. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you, you, basketball Ken, is a marathon. Ken, let me ask you, man. Yeah. What do you think, what do you think about these kids – or slash parents, you know, me and Mark has been talking about it recently, like with Jamal Crawford. Yep. I, I had a, a chance to meet him and what he posted about it. But 
What do, what do you think about this whole like crazy mentality of it's like D1 or bust? You know what I mean? Like it's like I gotta my kid gotta go D1. My kid, you know what I mean? Like it seems like nowadays kids. I know for me in my path, and I and I'm assuming for you, Marcus, when we talk, I was just happy to play anywhere. No, of course. You know what I mean? Just I was at, I started JUCO. I had to start mm. at a JUCO and work my way up. And I don't discredit my my JUCO years at all. You know what I mean? I don't look at that like uh, underachieved because I was at no. a JUCO. Right. Yeah. Right. But, but I don't know where this mentality of like, I got to be D1 or there's nothing else. You know what I mean? I just don't know where it came from. I don't know why it happened, but I was just curious for someone like yourself who keeps going. Like, what do right. you think about that? It's just the instant gratification and parents feeling like they're like protecting their children. Like, you know, yeah, D1 may have the best resources, but is it going to teach your child the best lesson? for their life like right we talk about growth like that's why i said stay the course you know like you may have to go back in the mud to get it again and you know everybody i feel like everybody wants to be on tv i feel like that's the that's the goal you know, you know the, the the we call them mimetic desires and, and kind yeah. of, you know they just they see that but it's like you know you look at you now being 40 and what you've been able to do through the game like yeah from your juku, ju, your juku, your ju, like, juco days, and where it's taking you, yeah. right? Like, right. Even with me, just like I, I redshirted my freshman year. I went to the only college that wanted to redshirt me, and, and you know, before I even started playing, I was, I tell, I was, I just started telling the story. Like, I was racing for last place in the team two mile with a dude six hundred, I mean six nine, two hundred and forty pounds. Like, we Jeez. elbow to elbow trying to you know not finish <laughs> right. last, you know before i even started playing so like there's nothing wrong with building a strong foundation because had i not you know start finishing with the wings and went finishing with the guards and a lot of time and been thrusted into this situation that i'm in now there's no way i would have the like perseverance to want to keep keep fighting keep pushing like there are things right. you got to work through and if you work through them if you put in the required work what's required you're going to ultimately reach your goals and they're going to change. You know, Kobe talked about it. Like it's not necessarily about the destination. It's about your journey. You know, where, where, where's the game going to take you? Like I've been to Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm going to Portland, Maine next week. Like I've never been to those places, but the game is still taking me there. Like it, it's, it's, it's just about like, you know, living my living, let, let the child live their life. Let your child be, 13 years old, 14 years old, 15 years old. Don't put all that expectation on them to do all these things because they can't handle it. Like they're, they're literally scared. Like as a child, you're scared. Like you don't know every day is a new day. You don't know these people. You playing a game, you sweating, you're probably overly dehydrated. Your knees hurt because you're growing. You playing, you know, six games in a week. Like it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? It's a yeah. lot. Yeah. And you want to try to, you know, I want to go to school. And I got all, I'm playing against, you know, this, yeah, it's just, it's so much. Like, I just want everybody to slow down. Everybody <laughs> needs to slow down, bro. Yeah. That's it. No, makes uh, sense. No, I think I agree. I think sometimes we get, you know, being around Bays, I understand that. I think you could, Bays, talk about how, you know what I'm saying? You had to kind of, you know, stay, take a step back, you know, getting let go by the Kings. Yeah. And then now, Getting that chance again, talk about that. Like, yeah, I mean, you just get to a point to where, like, you can't, you know, you're hitting the stone, and then, you know, you're hitting the stone, and all of a sudden you're getting the metal. Like, you can't keep hitting that metal. You know, you got to find another angle, find, you know, a different perspective, find, you know, create some space. Like, you know, first, self accountability. You know, why am I here? You know, what did I, how, what, what am I controlling that has me here? You know, you, you go down that whole journey. Cause when I got weighed, it was like 0.02% relief. Like I felt relief. And I was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna explore that. Like, you know, it's easy. It would have been easy to get all pissed off, and, you know, get all mad. But like, I explored the relief. Why, why do I feel like, all right, shit, I ain't gotta go to practice tomorrow. All right, whatever. You know, I drove back right. up the hill to Folsom and then I just sat still. And that's that's one thing that's, you know, go back to your point about, you know, us being the last ones to remember what it was like not having a phone. I, I was able to unplug. I was able to, like, detox 
kind of everything I had been through. Because like I said, I left home at 17, small town of 300 people, you know, played red shirt, played four years of college, two NCAA tournament appearances, two uh, conference championships. Going into my senior year, I get a DUI, and then seven days later, I break my left foot. So Ooh. fall off the draft boards. I get cleared the day before our first exhibition game to play my senior year, power through, and then the rest is history. Undrafted, uh, summer league. I go play OKC. I go to OKC uh, to play in Orlando summer league. I'm going James Harden before he goes off to Team USA, get a bone bruise in my knee, miss all the Orlando summer league, fly to Vegas to meet up with Golden State. I asked for a knee brace, and I ran like a mile and a half every night, every night. Like just to get in shape because I hadn't touched the ball or nothing. I wasn't playing. I was just like, all right, yeah. I'm here. I got this NBA sign on me. I'm here. And like like I said, you don't get that if you're like jumping around from situation to situation. Like I would have been looking for something different, man. I don't want to play here. Like I ain't, you know, no, nah, I'm in it. I, I'm not skipping steps. I'm going to do what's required. I need to get in shape. And I had one of the best summers yet. And that turned into a 10 year career that moment me saying all right i ain't done nothing let me get in shape let me run let me get my mind right turn it to, that's those seeds you plant you never know where they're going to take you if you just stay with it just stay with it stay with it i think i think i'm glad you speak on that because i just think kids and again i'm just kind of looking at the comments some a lot of my kids that um follow me and i'm sure that follow markets have been chiming in and looking in I'm just glad you spoke on how hard it is and how much work you have to put in perseverance because I just I just really don't think sometimes kids and families understand how hard it really is, right? I always emphasize that when we talk about this. Mark Marcus talked about you last time when we were on live just saying like like you playing like like at lifetime, right? Just playing pickup, yep. you at lifetime, yep. right? And then he's like guys might try to go at you a little extra because they're like, oh, it's an NBA guy. And then you kind of have to show them, like, I'm oh, yeah. really yeah. holding back. Like, you don't <laughs> understand. I'm kind of holding back. Yeah. yeah. Right. No, no, we usually don't drop names, but I'm going to drop one. J.D. was getting busted, okay? Oh, he he started blaming. Oh, he got busted God, so bad. Bro. He started blaming his shoes, okay? He said, my shoes. <laughs> I got these 15s. I said, bro, what size you wear? And I love J.D., man. I mean, I know what you're talking about. Hey, I love bro. J.D., but he, he gets in it, man. Yeah, like, he, and that's what I'm saying. That's what, when you when you put in that work, you have these reserves that, like, you can tap into. Like, you have that grit. You know, I've, I've been – you know, blessed to go to a really nice university that really cultured me and, you know, helped me not be so rough around the edges. But at the end of the day, like, like I said, I grew up in a small town, 300 people. Mom worked three jobs. Dad was, you know, in and out of work my whole adolescence. You know, I even turned to football for, you know, two years, but I realized yeah. real quick that ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I said I ain't a football guy. Nah, 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 so nah, football nah. players can come and hoop, and they can do cool. But can we go and play football? I, it, de it, it it depends on the position, yeah. bro. It really I does. Do it. I don't know, brother. I think I don't think we can, but I think we'll go out there. We'll be after, like we could jump a little bit, but I don't know if we can. I don't want to play football. If it's flag, I'll play. But ain't, I'm not yeah, hit, bro. I'm not. Nobody real like getting hit nah. like that. Nah, bro. I especially, have, especially because we taller. Exactly. And in football, they'll, they'll tell you the taller guys they go knees. for your knees, bro. Yeah, they said that. They said because I was I was actually considering playing in high school, like my sophomore year. Yeah, I never forget doing basketball season. They were like, we're going straight for them knees. And I was like, yeah, I looked down at my like, knees. Nah, I was bro. like, nah, <laughs> nah, bro. I'm telling I, you. I wore white hey. pants in a, in a Pee Wee League, bro. My pants, they rarely got dirty, bro. I'm on the sidelines, dog. Juke, juke, I'm stepping out. I'm not, I'm not, I ain't hitting nobody either. <laughs> I can't, nah, I'm straight. I'm straight. That's what I'm telling you, bro. I'm straight. All right, what's your next game? Uh, yeah, next week we got uh, we got two, Tuesday we play uh, Cleveland. 11 a.m. We leave tomorrow. Fly up there, um, and then we got Maine. So Cleveland's ahead of us in the standings, and then we got Maine. I think Maine's the top 16. You got to make top six to get into the into the playoffs. But we are nine and three, nine and four, maybe. 
over this last stretch, which is tied for, you know, the best, one of the best records in the G. And I, I remind my guys, like, we're playing just as well as anybody right now. And that's all that matters. So each night we step out there, we got a chance. No matter what they did before, because now it's like the playing field's leveling out. Everybody's tired. Everybody's traveling. It's been a long year. You know, they're trying to tell you when you need to move out of your apartment and all that. Nah, 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 nah. We got work to do first. We got work to do first. And then we'll talk about all that. So can you, can you break down? Okay. I see you can follow the, the, the Instagram, your team's Instagram. And a lot of people keep going up and down. So huh. I, I thought, so two way players, right? They get to go up and down. Yeah. But then I'm confused on some other players. Why are they keep moving? Is it, are they all two ways that are getting moved up and down? I, dude, I, I, I'm still trying to learn the business of basketball. Like, I, I never really paid. I mean, I like I said, I grew up a peer, so I never really even got into it at the higher level, at the NBA level. Like, I didn't know about, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, which probably ultimately ended up with me being where I am now. But it's all good. But um, it's, it's, you know, two-way guys, you got a certain amount of games you can play with the, with the NBA team, and then you come down. And then, uh, like, you can just get assigned if you're, like, a draft pick. They can just assign you to the G League to play. So, I mean, that, that's, that's why I give these guys, you know, so much respect and props because, you know, you, Terrell Brown Jr., prime example, went crazy tonight. Amazing story. Like, was playing well. Guards come down. Come, he comes out, falls out of rotation. And he, he it, it, it stung him for, like, one day. I never forget. He came in. You could just see he was wearing on him. He's human. He he deserves that. But the next day, Cuz is in the weight room, full blown workout, worked out, went back out and worked out. That's the seed he planted three weeks ago, and tonight was the result of that. Because yeah, he's the one that let kind of let y'all yep. back in the game and had some key buckets at the end guard, right? Yep. You yeah, hang yeah. your head, you miss that opportunity, and you don't know what happens after that. Sure. And that's why I said like these, these those are. That's those, these games are why you stay with it. It's exactly sure. why you stay with it. it. It only takes one point of the finger. You could be sitting on the end of the bench and the coach point at you. That's your time. So now as you walk up to the scores table, everything that's going to flush in, everything's going to come rushing in. It's either going to be confidence or nervousness. Like you're going to be like, I ain't ready. For, I, I didn't prepare. I, I'm not ready. Or you or kind of turn that, that, that negative into a positive that you like use that as fuel to your fire. And I think he did that a great thing. Chris, real quick, it was a guard. Uh, they went into yeah. overtime and won today, but the guard pretty much took over at the end, was doing his thing. No. So I don't know if right. up to date. No, no. I, I, didn't, I didn't get a chance to look at it. But it was just. Yeah, bro. Pressure. I think pressure this, is this is important to talk about too, base. Keep talking because a lot of guys that want to play on these top AAU teams or top high school teams. You know, you know that rotation sometimes gets a little rough. Yeah. So, good. My bad. Keep going. But that this is great. No, you're about. good. I um, I actually got I got cut from a, a really high end uh my senior year, and I ended up playing with the Elizabeth City Blazers, and I, I think that kind of changed my trajectory too, because you know everybody wants to play for the for the big big not big time teams, but like go be seen. You know, I was playing like 30, 35 minutes a game, like. That's way more than the eight, twelve minutes you're gonna play on a, you know, on a bigger team. team. Yeah, that, like, go, go be seen. That's go the play. conversation me and Marcus have a lot when it comes to in comparison to like my AAU club, which is YBA, which is in Rockland and whatnot, and then um, like the Oakland Soldiers, oh, right? Yeah. Or the mm -hmm. team You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I tell my kids, like my organization is very big and stable and self-sustaining. It's a weird circumstance. I'm kind of in my own island, nice. right? You've been in the Rockland area. You kind of see what it's like out there. But uh, I'm not I'm not at a point or I don't get the caliber of kids that I'm going to get a shoe contract from Adidas, right? I'm not there. So I'm in this weird – I'm in this weird in-between area, right? So a lot of times my kids that are really, really good will go play for the Team Lillards, the Oakland Soldiers, the Jalen Green Elites, whatever. And I try to have that same conversation with them. I say, well, you're going to go there, and, yeah, you'll be surrounded by talent, but for one, you got to drive two hours to and from practice. <laughs> you, you're yeah. just one. Two, they don't know you. Like, I actually right. know you. Right, I grew right, up right. with you. I helped mm. raise you. Like, mm. three, that's a strain on your parents, even mm. though – 
they're going to do it because they love you and they want to give you the best opportunity, but it is a, it is a strain on your parents. Right. right? So why not stay here where it's like six minutes away from your house? Right. I'm going to put you on the same stage as those guys, but you're going to go against them as opposed to being on the same team. Right. 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 But but oftentimes, at least nowadays with these kids, they rather just say, nah, I'd rather just join up and play three minutes a game with the soldiers than play 30 minutes a game for you. Which, again, I don't agree with, but that's just the culture of what it is. Just, I, I say this, just keep preaching that, and the kids, it would, I'm sure there'd be kids that have, that have thrived from your program, but, like, those are the kids you want in, the kids that, that want to play for you, those are the kids you're going to want anyway. That, yeah, you yeah, you're right. Just right. Run and try to find what looks better and all, like, I mean, that's, we can't, can't control that, you know, because they can't yeah. control, they aren't being controlled by it either, you know. I'm sure they would much rather stay close to home like it's safer you know but like you said they got people and all these other external forces in their head telling them that nah you know go bigger go you know go bigger go home like nah man just it's if i like that's why i like playing at lifetime i really appreciated playing at lifetime because my commute was super short like yeah. I would, before before my games tuesday nights i would go in my garage i would get my my pre-workout in my pre-game in my pregame warm up in, and then I drive eight minutes to the gym. You know, I ain't got to worry about cooling off, and I get straight to it. Like, that's the that's the luxury within itself. Regardless of what's across your chest, if you can keep that commute short and keep your life simple for the time being, it's like the best thing for you. Also, I want to piggyback. I felt like in you playing at Lifetime, you obviously knew you could average 50, 60 if you wanted to, right? It was easy, <laughs> but you started using everybody else, and I think I, I – Watching you from a fan perspective, you was known for a shooter. But now I seeing you play, you send people up off the pick and roll. You got a few drop downs and you got people banging out, right? Yep. So it kind of helped you open up a new aspect of your game because yep. now, I mean, you probably were passing, don't get it wrong, yep. but now you sending people up smooth, right? Yeah. Yep. So you use that to work on your game and work on other aspects of it because you knew exactly. I come down, go by Marcus, and then it's going to be a layup. Yeah, or whoever. You yeah, it's it, but if you if you love the game, you're gonna find a challenge. You know, it was one time I was playing with a weight vest. You know, I, I tried it all in there. You know, but I really feel like I, I challenged myself to elevate those around me. Like that was the real challenge. Like I want to make these gentlemen get the most out of this experience. So, you know, I'm gonna turn my guys up. Like they're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set, I'm gonna put them in the best position to succeed. And me being in the position that I'm in, my empowerment goes a long way. Like, I'll pass the guy ball, wide open shot. Even if you miss, great shot. I'm coming back to you. I'm coming right back to you. We had a guy uh, two seasons ago, lifetime, uh, big lefty on my squad. He struggled, he struggled with the three all year, struggled with the three all season. I told him, keep shooting. We're going to need him. Championship game against Marcus. He hit four threes hey, listen, in the first why? Why are we bringing it up? Four like threes. Why are we bringing he, that he up? Because, man, like, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's no, what I'm saying. Hey, and the – the cold part about it was, I was like, leave him open. Uh -huh. he and, and he made it. Right. Open. <laughs> he made it. I'm like, oh, my. They, they were so timely, too. Like, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a championship game. Tense is a little high. Like, those were, like, big-time shots. And, like, that's the that's – the, that's, that's why I love leading, like, because it's about empowering, elevating those around you. You know, they talk about the best players in the game. How do they elevate their teammates? Did they make their teammates better? That's always a question at the end of the day. For a lot of the greats, did they make their teammates better? And that's one thing I stand on, like leadership, because I've already won the game. Like I've I've done what a lot of these young men are trying to do. So it's like, I'm my my way of getting closure with the game is giving my experience, not like sitting back saying, "Oh, I played ten years in the league." No, nah, it's like I'm showing you the ins and outs. Like when you come set this back screen, what are you looking for? The angle you need to set it in order for the play to work, you know, when you come off into your setups, like the little stuff that I picked up is what I'm really trying to like instill in the game, help button the game up a little bit. Well, it's, it sounds like when you retire, you know, you can come coach your YBA, bro. Whatever, <laughs> no, whatever you're, not, you're, you're, not, you're not coaching that YBA. Don't coach your YBA, you know, bro. He, hey, you don't don't coach your YBA. I recruit coaches. Hey, I he recruit coaches say, too. Hey, I don't just recruit players. Play. I recruit he coaches. Say, no, no. play for YBA back in the day, you'd be like, wait, what? Uh, yeah, we're gonna be $5,000 for you to sign up. We ain't doing that. Oh, man, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. But no, man, that's that's good you have that mentality, bro. It is. Another thing, too, is, you know, when we play, one thing I learned from Bays too, was 
he would find ways to make people around him so much better. Like that. Not only that, you played very well with Delhi. Now, if you play with Delhi, you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> Playing with Delhi yeah. is stressful. That's my brother. That's my brother, but I can't play with him. I, 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 like, I don't know how to play with him. I like Delhi. I played with him I like once or twice. He's a dog, but, bro. Bro, he, a dog. he ain't he he bro, he ain't met, he ain't never met a shot he didn't like. Let me play like that. He ain't never met a shot he didn't this like. This dude Bays found a way to make him <laughs> Like it was like tough. Like damn, I gotta worry about this. Like, yeah, no question. You <laughs> he, he know he coming downhill too. So like, yeah. I'll, I'll get a rebound outlet. You know, I see attack, and he would just turn up. And then, then he learned how he learned how to pick his spots. And then yeah. when he got going, you know, go, go. You know, he get tired, and then I, I take the ball and we move it around. Like that's just it. Like that's just how. I mean, I remember you know Jared Jack was so good for Steph Curry. Yeah. Uh, my rookie yeah, season. He was. He did he just was. that. Like, you know, stuff would get on the heater, and then when we needed to pull it back, Jay Jack would kind of orchestrate everything. You know, and I, I learned that early on. Like, those those Mike, those guys like that, you can really just, like, you know, really help them see the floor a lot better. And that's all it is. You know, Dudley, he's going to go 110 the whole game if he can. You know, I just help him pick his spots a little bit better. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. He's Man. a dog, though. So I would, I would use that. Like, so sometimes in our, my open runs, too, when you used to come, I used to watch you. And then on Saturdays, I go to El Grove and go play. And I have uh, Braxton, uh, Chris, you know Braxton. So I have Braxton. Yeah, Braxton. Okay. He played for me. A big old uh, seventh grade. He's really tall, six foot, can go, right? Damn near six foot. And I got a lot yeah. of these guys. So the grown man would be like, we got to play y'all. And then, boom, mm. I, I hyped them up. Boom, no we ran question. out of the court. But no then, question. So it was funny because that week, they kind of was letting Braxton kind of be him. And then the next week, they was really locking up, though. They was like, oh, Yeah, they was it. They was like, here. They was ready. <laughs> <laughs> they start loading up their team. They was like, nope, we're going to beat them. So, yeah, you know, that's how it be, bro. That's the game, though, bro. Especially when you in that position that you've been around. Like, just, just give that back. Like, give that empowerment. Lead the game better than you found it. You know, like just that's just my mentality. That's just it. But that's it, man. I know, Baze, you gotta get ready to go, Chris. Yeah, I, got pack, man. I got a yeah, pack. Yeah, I gotta. I gotta pack two. You know, Philippines be on the way. You know, what I'm saying? Right, you go. Uh, I'm driving down. Flight. I'm driving back to SAC today. So that's what I'm about to do. I'm gonna be up driving at night. Yeah. Dang. Not right this second, but it like I'm a I'm a shit, I'm gonna chill out for a couple hours and I'm gonna hit the road. You know I work graveyard at UPS, so I'm up all night anyway, so I'm used to that. All right, all right. then y'all. Well, I appreciate y'all, yes, man. Y'all have a good one. Bang, good day. seeing you again, man.